Hi goalies, this is Eric Levine. I'm here to talk to you specifically about the gear that I wear. Gear is something that is so unique and can be customizable for goalies of any age. So I figured I'm going to give you a bit of a breakdown on every piece that I wear, uh, why I wear it, and some of the customization that I've done to it to enhance my play. So I'm starting here just with my gitch. Uh, I like tight long uh, sleeves. I, like to, I tend to get pretty hot, but I like the way that these feel. On this Warrior one, it kind of has this sticky area that keeps my chest protector to my arms. Uh, specifically with my pants, I like that this flap folds down. This is a Velcro insert, and this is going to be useful later when I put my socks on. And then I've got long, high socks. Now, the reason that I recommend something that comes into here is that these are cut-proof socks. So if there's a skate blade that ever happens to come to the back, there's a little bit more protection so my skin is just not exposed. All right, the first piece of gear that I wear, uh, I've done this since college. These are knee braces. This is a Bragg knee brace. I've used these uh, originally when I had an injury to my knee uh, in college, and then since then, I've just found that the protection this gives me is so good in my butterfly. So I have this extra layer of cushion that my knee doesn't bend as maximum as it can. So I'm gonna, just gonna go through. I wear knee braces on both knees. These are really good because they are not only form-fitting to my leg, uh, but they have a lot of flexibility to them. So as I go through, you can see there's about six straps here. Again, knee braces are not something that I think is necessary, but for me personally, having had a lot of knee injuries in the past and having multiple surgeries on my knee, I find it gives me just a little bit more stability. So when I go down, I'm not going in this full range of flexion. This is as far as my leg can bend. So it prevents uh, what I think are some possible injuries. So I wear these on both knees. This is a Bragg knee brace again, uh, where if you wanted to look into any sort of, this is the brand that I would recommend. So after I go through, strap these up. The next piece of equipment I want to talk about are knee pads. Now these, in my opinion, are absolutely non-negotiable. This is what every goalie needs to wear, some form of this knee pad. So for me, I have the Vons. I like these because it's a three-part construction, and this bottom piece is very flexible. So as you can see, it also has a garter belt. So when I strap this on, it's able to sit all the way around my waist like this. And now, as I come through and I strap these around myself, you can see that I'm keeping this lift with the garter belt. And then as I get into the three Velcro inserts, this is gonna give me protection against a puck that might escape the knee pad on my pads. I see a lot of younger goalies in, in particular not wanna wear these. This is so important because there's nowhere that a puck is gonna hit my knee and that's not an injury that you want, trust me. Also with this, <clears throat> the biggest uh, thing I hear is goalies say that this ends up sliding down and almost falling off of your leg. So I simply take <clears throat> clear tape, I go around, <clears throat> I go around the top, and I go around the bottom. So all you need is one piece, and this just, again, provides a little bit more anchoring into my leg. Another unique feature about when you do clear tape is if you fold the corner of it, when you press it down, when you go to lift it off, you have a little bit of starter. So if you just fold the clear tape and it's hard to kind of take off, fold the corner in and that way it stays on, but then you have that sort of tab to pull up. Okay, so now as you can see, these aren't going anywhere. They're anchored to my leg. I have good protection. Next up, again, a personal preference is hockey socks. Some goalies do not like hockey socks and I get it. I switched to these maybe about seven or eight years ago after my first year pro, and I found that it was not only more comfortable, but again, it kept my knee pads from moving. So as I put these socks on, these are practice socks, and in particular, this has this Velcro piece. This is where the pants that I talked about come into play. So I unfold this, I tuck it under, and now this Velcro slaps right on there. It's got one in the front, it's got one in the back. So I do that, pull it up, both sides. And I also think that hockey socks, they not only look better, but as I mentioned with the regular socks, 
if there was ever a skate that might happen to come in the back of my leg, it's just another added piece of protection because exposed skin and skate blades do not mix. And you don't want any sort of cuts. So here's the last time I'm gonna use my clear tape. <coughs> this just sort of helps to keep the hockey socks from falling down because that is one of those <coughs> complaints that I hear from goalies is that it moves around. All right, now that I have <coughs> the base, <coughs> most important piece obviously is the cup. And as you can see, for me, <coughs> I'm a pretty skinny guy. So I've tied my cup with some clear tape just to give it a little bit extra tightness. So as I come through into both, I like this Vaughn one because it has this buckle on the side <coughs> where if I ever need, I can pull that a little bit tighter. <coughs> okay, now we're getting into the customization part. So these are warrior pants. These are the RX3s. There's a few reasons that I like them. One, as you can see, they have this internal belt. So this belt sits a lot tighter than the actual pant itself. For a skinny guy like me, it really helps to keep it in. The second thing I've done, suspenders. You attach them to the back, and then normally, suspenders are gonna have that rubber piece with a metal clip that is gonna attach here. Problem with that is that anytime that a puck hits it, it's gonna break. So what I've done is I've simply tied just a hockey skate lace to the loop in the pants, and I've poked a hole into the bottom of my suspender, and that way, there's no way that this is gonna break with a puck. You get the height that you want it at, and that's cool. The second piece of customization I've done is if you can see here on the inside of this belt loop, I have tied a very small circle with uh, some skate lace, double knotted, and this is gonna come into play when I put my chest protector on. So I've got these on both sides here, and then I've got this internal loop. The last thing I've done is I've tied uh, skate lace through this big bulky piece, and that's gonna, again, fasten to my chest protector. So I make sure that my suspenders are out of the way, I put these on here, and then with these buckles and these straps, you can start to tighten this internal loop. So as you can kind of see, I'm internally strapped in, but the bulk of my pants are still staying out. All right, next thing we have, skate guards come off. Every skate has its own hollow, its own cut. I like mine super sharp, so I do 3 8 These CCM skates are awesome because to take the, sh uh, the skate blade out, it's just this unscrewing of this back piece. The blade pops out, you can sharpen it. These are awesome skates. So I'm gonna come through. Also in my skates, I have 120 wax laces. That's the tallest, or excuse me, the, the longest uh, length of lace that you can get. Waxed, to me, has a better hold. So it's a lot tighter of a grip in the skates than regular laces. I like things on my body to stay tight, and over the course of a game, over the course of a practice, things tend to loosen up. So the wax laces are extremely helpful in maintaining the form of the skate onto my foot. So when you see I'm gonna finish tying nice and tight the skate, I'm gonna leave, and this is a little trick that we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna leave myself a very big loop. So you can see the size of this loop that I'm gonna leave on my skates. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, both sides, and that's gonna be specifically for my pads. And I've gone through a lot of different ways to put my gear on, and this is many years, thousands of hours of practice have kind of led me to these little tidbits, these little tricks that I find make playing goalie a little bit easier because trust me, I'm a gear nerd and if there's something that's even a little bit off on my skates or my pads or whatever, you notice it. And if you notice something that does, doesn't feel quite right, you're not gonna play as good. Um, or at least that's how it works for me. So I'm very particular about how I wear my gear. Skate guards come off. Now, my pads. These are CCM E-Flex 5s. Love these pads. This is what's called a 
<coughs> single outer brake. So there's one brake on the outside and there's no brake internal. So on the inside of the pad, it's one solid piece of foam that goes all the way up and down. There's an outside brake here. There's very minimal strapping. This is a purely Velcro. You can see there's one Velcro on the knee, one Velcro on the calf. There's one Velcro piece that comes and loops around here. And then we have, to me, the most important part, which are these toe ties. Now, as I've gone on in my career, this toe tie length has grown increasingly. And I'm gonna to explain to you why. But you can see I have no strap here around what would go through the heel of my skate. That's called a boot strap. I've taken the boot strap off and I've increased the length of this toe tie. Now, if you can kind of see here, I've got two ties at the bottom to keep this from moving any further. And then once I have this space that I want, it's about, I'd say two inches, I then double knot it. And so that way, whenever I pick my pad up or my skate is in the pad, it's not gonna affect the length of this. So this has been like this all year. This is the standard length that I want. And even if it changes a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna notice how the pad sits and reacts to my leg on the ice. And that's not what I want. I want consistency. So you start in, <clears throat> you loop this under your skate, around the front, <clears throat> crisscrossing around the middle, and then crisscrossing around the back. Now, once I have all three of these loops in, I pull <clears throat> the knot of my skate up against the very top of this piece of my skate. <clears throat> now here's where this length of skate comes in. With a very big loop, okay, this is the biggest mistake that I see from goalies, is that this comes undone from the skate. So their skate ends up coming loose or their pad tie ends up coming loose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross in the middle. I'm gonna make my normal knot that I have pressing down on this top loop. I'm then gonna find myself here with another big loop. So now I essentially have a big loop with my skates and a big loop with my pad ties. From here, I'm gonna connect these, connect these, I'm gonna end up making a second loop <clears throat> and double knotting that. <clears throat> now, with this, the skate lace and my pad tie are now connected and there's no way that any of these are coming undone. It also keeps it out from falling, is that this is too long, <clears throat> it's gonna end up falling and cutting my blade. So once I have that pad construction, I undo the Velcros, <clears throat> start with this calf strap pretty tight, loop this once around, buckle this in, and that's it. Right? There's nothing else that this pad has. No bootstrap, it's got Velcros, it's great, but it's gonna stay secure on. And I'm gonna go through, and I'll just run through real quick on the other side, what it looks like. Crisscross front, crisscross in the back, and when you get really good, you can just do this with your eyes closed. Pull this nice and tight. Now this front part of my skate, this white piece on the cowling, this lace should sit as high up and be as tight. If this is loose and there's some space like this, I see some goalies do this, this is gonna end up coming underneath the blade and you're gonna step on it on the ice. So it's very important that once you have these pulled, you gotta tighten this right to the top. Now, again, I've separated my skate lace. I'm gonna then tie my pad lace so it presses down on one of the big loops. I'm gonna make my normal way I tie. From here, I now pull so that these parts of the, sh of the string of the lace don't be become too long where they hang down. From this, I'm going to connect my two pad laces. I'm gonna connect my two skate laces. And then just as if this was a single piece, right? Two loops become a single piece. With that, I tie a knot, I tie another knot, and now this is not going to dangle down. My skate and my pad are completely secured, so nothing's going to end up coming undone. That's the biggest thing I see with younger goalies is they tie individual pad and skate, and then it starts to come undone when you're on the ice, and it's a whole big thing. So I get the pad strapped up, and that's what these look like. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of space between my skate and where my pad might sit. 
and this gives me the flexibility that when I go down, this pad is going to be able to roll down and form a nice tight seal on a butterfly. Pads are very specific to the goalie. This is what I found has worked for me. Next piece of equipment I put on is my padded shirt. I've had this thing for three years. It's got pads on the ribs and a little padding up front. I just like more padding because pucks really hurt and at the professional level they shoot them very hard. So what's cool about all of this stuff is that you just learn, again I don't like things coming undone. So I take this shirt all the way down, I take my cup and I sort of fasten the shirt in. So now the shirt is tucked in, I take my pants, I put them back up, I give this a nice tight pull. We're almost to the chest protector part, but first, throat guard. Either goalies, in my opinion, should either have the dangler, which is that clear piece that sits down here. Actually, I actually even have one under my stall. Nope, it's in my other bag. That's okay. So you either have the dangler, which covers your throat, or you wear this neck protector. I choose the neck protector, so this comes on over here. All right, now we're into the chest piece. <clears throat> Probably the most amount of customization, but <clears throat> I like this CCM one. This is the <clears throat> this is the Eflex 5. It's got <clears throat> customization options for your shoulder blades, so <clears throat> I can adjust the height. I can adjust sort of the width that these shoulder blades set up. You can adjust everything from how tight you want it around your elbows. And I like that it also has this piece right here. So this is the rib strap that keeps the chest protector together. Now it's easy to take a puck off the side. And if you take a puck and it just hits this plastic buckle, it's probably going to break. So CCM has this built in protector so that these buckles don't end up coming undone. Now, as you can see at the very bottom, there's a loop around this and I have tied a hockey lace, which is black because the hockey lace in here is white. So it's going to make sense in a minute, but I've left it. I've double, triple knotted it and I've left two strands of lace. So two pieces on both sides. Okay. So it's securely fastened in a couple knots and then it's also got two dangling pieces that I'm going to use. So once this goes, I don't like to unbuckle these. I just go straight over top. This comes down. Now this might be a little hard to see, but I'm going to kind of get down at this angle. So this white loop that's on my pants, I'm going to take the two strings from my chest protector and I'm simply going to tie once around. I'm going to knot and double knot that. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm securing the sides of my chest protector into my pants. Now you might ask yourself, why would you do that? Well, for many years, as I was playing goalie, I like to tuck my chest protector in. I've always done that. Some goalies, it flops out and that's fine. But for me, I like it tucked in. It allows the pants to stay wide and it's a tighter feel. So as you're going through, right, and you're making saves, and you're in net, and let's say you stretch to make a glove save, well this side of the chest protector ends up coming over top the pants. And it drives you crazy because it just doesn't feel like it form fits to your body how you want it. So I've essentially created this system where I have a loop on the pants, I've got ties on the chest protector, and now this stays nice and secure. So with that, the sides don't come out, I've got this extra long tie from my pants that I've move through this piece. Every chest protector has one of these. So you loop through, pull on the outside, loop it through. Now I come all the way through. I make, I leave about three inches of space and then I triple knot it. So there's enough space here. So it's not pulling this chest protector into me tight, but it's securing it. So it doesn't come out from the front. So the front can't come out, both the sides can't come out. Now before I put my arms in, this is where I take my suspenders. These are fitted to me, so it's very easy to take them over. They sit right on top, and you can see they're not that tight, right? They have some give. If they were super tight, I would feel like I'm being pulled down 
and it would just feel almost heavy, right? So this is a nice loose, but it's also tight enough where it keeps my pants sitting up. Put my arms through. I keep these right around. Now, for me, I like things to be tight, so I pull the sides, and then this front buckle on my pants comes all the way tight as I just ripped that off, but that's okay, these are old. So this would be nice and tight as I pulled it, attaching itself around here to me. And then everything here sits very, very formed to my body, but nothing's flopping around, right? So this is kind of the feel and the look that I want when I put my gear on. Now I don't have a jersey because it's the end of the year, so that's fine. My helmet's pretty standard. I have a very small head, so this is a CCM uh, model helmet. I think it's a Model 3, which is a, just a tighter fitting helmet. I wear the matching CCM blocker. There's no real customization. It's just kind of one where you can adjust the strap of it. Um, I like that it's got the finger protection here because a lot of times pucks end up coming through and hitting you in the finger. Uh, pretty standard on the blocker. And then the glove, I wear a 600 brake. So CCM offers three options. 590 would be where the finger, so the, basically it's the break angle of the pocket. So 590 is where the glove is sticking straight up. 600, it's tilted a little out to the side. If you can imagine on a clock, 590 is like 12 o'clock. 600 is moving to about 132 o'clock. And then the 580 is even more kind of way out to here. So I like the 600 break. I like the double pocket. So you can either get a single pocket where there's one, like just this, uh, just this piece is a single string, right? There's no double side. I like the double side catcher because it just gets more pucks. I also use, this is skate lace, right? So the sides of this are the same thing that I put my skates on with. I find the puck when it hits it, tends to stay in the pocket a little bit more. This particular glove is a practice palm. So there's three options. There's either game ready, there's practice, or, or excuse me, game ready, there's uh, standard, or then there's practice. So this is a practice palm, meaning there's the most amount of padding inside my palm. Now, most people don't like this because you can't exactly close the glove all the way, but I have found that even when I catch pucks, I don't close the glove all the way here. So people think we have to squeeze the glove all the way together to catch the puck. This is about as much as I can close my glove, but rarely do I have pucks that hit this glove and bounce out. What I do like is the amount of padding, because hitting the puck here or here is essentially hitting your fingers and your palm, and that really hurts when you take very fast shots. So practice palm to me is the best and most amount of padding, and I also like how it feels nice and big. You can get any customization in terms of strapping, but it's all pretty simple. This is just form fitted to my hand. I'll put that on. The last thing that I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna grab my stick. Now I mentioned to you how the fingers of the blocker hand tend to get hit. So with this stick here, right, I've got tape that I wind, spin, and then wrap around. That's where these grips come in. So I like the grip feel of that. This is grip tape. Here's the most important part. When I have my stick and I hold down the paddle, you're supposed to hold it with your finger out here. It gives the maximum amount of control. You don't just hold a stick like this. So you keep it your finger. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of foam, cut it to the size, the width of my stick. I've wrapped pre-wrap and then grip tape. And now you can see there's a big bump here. So if a puck were to come and hit my stick, which it often does when you're in the butterfly, and it starts to ramp up, before it hits my finger, it's gonna hit this pad and it's gonna go away. I cannot tell you how many times I've taken a shot to the outside of the finger and thought that I've broken my finger. It's not a good feeling. So this is, I think it's called a goalie block. They actually sell them now. I was one of the first ones to do this. My actually goalie partner, Jake Hildebrand did. And I've been doing it before they sold the block. And I've, cause I've known it's a great idea. So if you ever want some extra protection, foam, nice and thick piece. It's about a, you know, half an inch uh, in depth. Wrap some pre-wrap around it first so it stays. Wrap a little bit of grip tape around and make sure it's at the bottom of where you hold your finger. Any puck that hits, boom, it's gonna hit this before it hits your finger and breaks. Other than that, some black tape, a little bit of wax on the stick. I use a 26 inch paddle. I changed from a 27. The paddle height is always the height from the base 
up to here. It has nothing to do with the knob or the shaft of your stick. So before, my paddle was an inch higher, so I would be holding it like this. And in the butterfly, that means that my hands were a little bit higher up. Well, since I moved to a 26, it's lowered my hands and my stance and my butterfly, so I can keep that angle of my, of my hands down to the puck more than being high up. So I found a smaller paddle slightly helped to be a little bit more forward with where I wanted my hands in relation to the puck on the ice. Also, last thing I've done is I've cut this down, I'd say about an inch from the top. I found that a little bit shorter gives me more mobility and freedom when I'm playing the puck. Sometimes something too tall becomes too cumbersome. I do see younger goalies use sticks that are way too big for them. You'd rather err on the side of it being a little bit smaller than a lot bigger. With that being said, these are all of the customizations that I've made into my gear. As you can see, things fit nice and tight. I'm not on the ice right now, but when I go down, right, generally you can see how my pads sit. So the biggest thing I see is goalies pads, if they're strapped incorrectly, they're gonna start to roll and do this. And you don't want that. You want a nice tight seal so that it stays formed in the butterfly. You can slide left and right, but most importantly, you're gonna make saves here. And then as you notice, when I go to make a save, my chest protector doesn't come out over my pants. Everything stays together. My shoulder wings sit up nice and high, so I have the maximum amount of coverage. I've got protection on the ribs, protection in my pants. If a puck ever does come through this side, I've got those knee protection pads. So not only am I not gonna get hit with pucks, but I'm gonna try to make a lot more saves. So this is the gear, and I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you.